Welcome back to Footballology. So I know I'm kind of late on this video, but I had to make this video. Being a Chiefs fan and being an NFL fan, I had to make a video like this. But I really don't want to talk about Pat Mahomes' contract and what that is, but more or less what happened after he signed that contract. Everyone start throwing the word around dynasty for the Kansas City Chiefs, being Pat Mahomes is going to be here for the next 10 years and everything that they encompass. I think personally the dynasty is feasible, yes, but sometimes I feel like that word casually gets thrown around. So in this video, I really want to talk about the idea and some of the things that need to happen in order for a successful dynasty to be built. So when we go back and we look at the most recent dynasty, obviously the New England Patriots come to mind. They did it for two decades, 20 seasons of being a consistent playoff caliber team or even a Super Bowl contending team and doing it year in and year out without really any flaws. Even when Tom Brady went down for a year, they were still a caliber, a playoff caliber team with Matt Castle at quarterback. So this team was always good. And so having a good quarterback is a piece of the puzzle. It's a huge piece of the puzzle. I'm not denying that at all. So having Patrick Mahomes locked up for 10 years definitely helped the Chiefs case and then you got Bill Belichick a head coach with Andy Reid in our head coaching position so obviously you can see why people are starting to say dynasty but I think there's other key things that fall to the wayside that people haven't talked about much drafting is very important but not only drafting in the first and second third round but you got to draft in the fourth fifth sixth and seventh round those that's a lot of the Patriots rosters are made up there when you go back and look at the Patriots roster even undrafted guys coming in and playing out a role also, getting people to buy into your system. When, you, when you're winning, obviously, it's easy for people to buy in. And I think that's what made New England so such easier team to play for. It's like, just do what you're supposed to and come in and do your job. And obviously, that was their slogan. But actually getting people to buy into that was probably the more difficult part of it. Like, I know this is out of your realm or out of your comfort zone, but I need you to do this. Because if you do this, then it's going to help us win. And you're going to be a winner. But, you know, consistently drafting in the later parts of the draft and always getting guys and hitting on every pick dang near because you're paying so many people and you're trying to take care of your roster that you currently have in place. And I made a video about drafting really well and having to come back and pay some of those guys. And that's something New England also had to kind of, you know, face or that adversity that New England faced over the last 20 seasons as well is not only drafting well, but then having to go pay a Jamie Collins or Chandler Jones or like even Richard Seymour wanted to get paid. Like people start to win and then they start to feel like they're bigger than the team and they want to get paid. So New England says, okay, that's fine. Go get paid. But we're going to take care of people there in-house who wants to be here and who wants to win. And you see these people leave New England, and they just don't have the same level of success. So then, like, for instance, Patrick Chong left New England, came back, because he knew that he didn't have that much success when he went to Philly. And so you always see these people leave New England, and you see, like, players just... Some players actually buy into what New England did as a, as a team. And that's what I think made them a good dynasty. I think another part of this equation, to the dynasty equation, if you will, is free agency. Now, if you go back and you look over the course of a couple of years, they don't spend a lot of money in free agency, and mainly because they get the guys that are pretty much, I'm not going to say on the last leg, but guys that really haven't won anything, that wants to win, and understands that no one has a winning way about them. If you come in, do your job, and take care of business, you have an opportunity to win ball games. Now, these guys are veterans, guys that are later parts of their career, or guys that just haven't had success throughout their career, and they come in New England, and they're coming off a bad season or you know a bad couple of years. And you bring these guys in and you get them from dirt cheap, but you know their skill level is really high. You can find a way to make them fit into your system. Prime example, currently right now, Xavier Rhodes had left Minnesota, and I felt like he was always a top five corner in my mind, left Minnesota now. And I think, if I remember correctly, he's in Indianapolis. And they got him for dirt cheap because he came off of a bad season. So that's a New England move, in my personal opinion. So when you're building this dynasty and you're doing those things, free agency is a really big part of it. Bringing in guys and veterans for really cheap and guys that have opportunity that want to have opportunity to win and are willing to do what it takes to win and you bring those guys in and they take care of business without hesitation you think about most of the guys that we know from new england's roster are notable guys off new england's roster they're either undrafted or late round guys guys that play out of position that they played in college guys that are willing to do what it takes to win ball games so i think realistically building a dynasty is feasible for the kansas city chiefs but you have to make sure that you're drafting correctly, not only in the first and second round, but through the whole entire draft, the whole entire draft. You got to you gotta hit on at least six picks. I think that's what New England did consistently. They hit on six guys, at least five to six guys every draft. And then if you didn't hit on anybody in the draft, guess what? They turned around and they got guys out of free agency for dirt cheap, got somebody's leftovers, if you will, and bring them in. And then you think about Randy Moss coming out of Oakland. When he was leaving Oakland, everybody's like, well, Randy Moss is done. And he goes to New England, catches 23 passing, 23 touchdowns. And so it's like, what? 
Okay, yeah, so he's still Randy Moss, but no one got him for dirt cheap. Randy Moss wanted to come in and win a Super Bowl. Unfortunately, he didn't get his Super Bowl ring, but that's what it was all about. Randy Moss was done. He was done with the losing ways, and sometimes you can find those guys like that who have been losing for so long, they're like, I'm just done with these losing ways. So, basically, I said all that to say this. Ideally, I think the Chiefs could win, or I think the Chiefs could honestly build a dynasty. But if we draft correctly and we do the right things through our free agency and we get players that are willing to win and do what it takes to win ball games, we'll be perfectly fine. I think building a dynasty in Kansas City is very feasible, and I really hope it's happened because I want to be a snobby fan for the next 10 seasons, and that would be badass. But, yeah, I just I, I think we could do it. I think we could. We just got to get people to buy into what we want. So that's all I have for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Do you feel like the Chiefs signing Pat Mahomes to 10-year deal automatically gives them a chance to be a dynasty? Or is there still more places or voids that they need to fill in before they can even consider the idea of being a dynasty? Also, I want to hear you guys' top three dynasties outside of New England. I think New England will be on everybody's list. But outside of New England, what are top three dynasties right now? Let me know what you think in the comment section. Let me know who your top three dynasties are. And if you're not a footballologist yet, I don't know what you're waiting on. Go and subscribe to the YouTube channel today. Become a footballologist. And stay safe, football fans.